We're back on the record. Let's bring in our next potential juror, please. Please be seated. Good afternoon. You are hereafter referred to as juror E7, and uh, you're in here this afternoon so the attorney, attorneys can ask you questions about the jury questionnaire that you filled out Monday morning. And Mr. De La Ronda is going to inquire. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. We're going to be asking you a series of questions regarding the questionnaire that you filled out in terms of just publicity, so we're limited at this stage from that aspect of it. You notated in the questionnaire in terms of what you knew about the case that there was an altercation between the two and T. Martin was shot as a result. Yeah. Okay. Was your basis for uh, that information from um, TV or a newspaper or friends or? That's to my appreciation all that is established fact. I'm sorry, sir. Yes. Wait, 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 from was TV, it local news? from well, yes, from okay. local, from <clears throat> national, from newspapers, from radio talk shows. Take your pick. Gotcha, gotcha. In terms of the local news, TV, do you recall what channels it would have been on? Gosh, it seems like most any channel you could have looked at. Okay, all right. And then, how about national news? Again. Okay. Do you kind of channel surf and yeah. go from Fox to CNN to ABC, CBS, NBC? From Fox to MSNBC, okay. yeah. Do you favor one more than the other in terms of where you get your news? I think <clears throat> favor. Or one that you visit more than the others? You know, some people are partial to Fox, some people are I partial to I try to keep a look at all of them, but not all of them. Mainly, I have you know, your basic local news, and then I, I like to watch um, Fox, MSNBC, and CNN. Okay. And in terms of your, uh, oh, I didn't want to leave out the newspaper. Did you read any stories about this on the newspaper? <coughs> uh, Orlando Sentinel showed, you know, that's the only newspaper that I actually look at. Okay. And do you get a hard copy, or do you go online in terms of Orlando Sentinel? I don't get either. I just have picked up occasional copies and you would see it there. Sure. Okay. And in terms of your um, exposure uh, to what was going on in this case in terms of the media, would that have been at the time that back it occurred, back in February? Primarily, yes. Okay, last year? Yeah. Did you keep up with the case as it was no. going on? No. Okay. In terms of uh, your recollection, in terms of what you first um, heard or saw uh, regarding the case from the media. Um, do you recall in terms of time when this happened back in February? Do you recall, was it like a few days after or months after? No, just within a couple of days, okay. primarily. All right. And was your first exposure at uh, TV, you think? Yeah. And yeah, in terms of your first exposure, what do you recall, other than what you've noted here, what do you recall seeing or hearing about this case? I know it's been a while, so I'm just asking you what you recall. Uh, first recall. I don't understand. The question is, what, what do you remember right now in terms of the first thing you heard about this case? What do you remember? <coughs> that, what, what that was? be strictly honest, it's hard to remember. Okay, all right. You can't pinpoint a specific. Sure, okay, all right. Because the, the reason I asked, you stated that this was an altercation between the two and T. Martin was shot as a result. Right. Uh, is that just from a combination of everything you were exposed to that right. you came to that statement? Right. Okay. Um, now, it happened, you got exposed to it at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Did you then follow any court proceedings in terms of what was going on regarding the case? Minimal. Okay. Yes. And did you do any research on your own on the internet about the case? No. Not that I can remember. I may have, but not that I, nothing right. specific stands sure. out. It was a while ago. 
Yes, sir. In other words, uh, like Facebook, do you have like a Facebook at all? Yes, yes okay. I do. And sometimes on Facebook, apparently the news comes out too that you can, if you want to, check. Did you do any of that stuff? Uh, no. Okay. No, in fact, we had conversations at the very beginning, and as soon as I found out how divisive it is, I, I worked in the entertainment industry to a degree, and I found that it's so politically charged that it's best to just try to avoid it at the time. So, okay, uh, so you made a conscious decision to, to, to avoid it. Stop you know, involving myself in conversations because you could make enemies. Okay. And on purpose, we're calling you each segment and also we're not at this time referring to what your occupation is, but you mentioned you're in the entertainment business. That um, was what and, and so because of that, you, you made a conscious decision not to, to be involved at all or not to find out more than you needed to about the case? Once I started hearing people around me get so heated about their opposition to one another or my opinion of what might have been thought at the time. It's okay. Gotcha. Just leave that alone. So, so the people that you were having discussions about the case with or that were commenting about the case right. might be a better way. Right. Um, those people were interjecting their opinions. Right. Okay. And was that on both sides of, of, of the... Uh, oh, yeah. In other words, people favorable to Mr. Zimmerman and then people favorable yeah. to yes. Raymond Martin. Yep. Did you ever express your opinion to those people about uh, one side or the other? To a degree in both directions, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me if you could a little bit about you, what you would have expressed to those individuals on both sides. Well, I always kind of have a tendency to try to play devil's advocate for whatever. Sure. Whatever seems to be the more forceful. Sure. People have a tendency to try to dominate a conversation. Right. And if they're trying to dominate, it see, I have a tendency to try to, you know, bring in a devil's advocate. So you play the devil advocate as to both positions? To me, it was kind of humorous, and it would, I right. would try to interject humor sure. and try to okay. defuse conversations sure. that would lead up. And in terms of you interjecting yourself from a devil advocate standpoint, was that based on what exposure you had been exposed, what things you've been exposed to by the media in terms of what you knew about the case based on the media? Right, and what people would be saying at that particular okay. time. All right. Let, if, if we could, in terms of people that were um, in support of George Zimmerman or in favor of George Zimmerman's uh, position, what, in terms of when you played devil's advocate, what did you? Uh, argue with them about? Or what did you Gosh, contradict? And I guess it, it, what would be being said at the time. Okay. Do you recall any of that at this time? Uh, I mean, nothing that jumps right at Okay. Me. All right. Mm -hmm. Did you ever agree with any of the position of those people that were advocating on behalf of George Zerbe? Well, certainly sometimes they had their points and you'd have to say, okay, well, until you're there, until you hear the absolute facts of the case, you don't know what you're talking about. And neither do you on the other side. Okay. Until you hear facts, you know, and get the facts of exactly what occurred, you can't make that. At, at this time, do you recall any of the positions that those individuals were taking? Well, yeah, I suppose. Uh, what, but what, things would change. Like, for instance, initially, there was a lot of talk like, oh, well, yeah, but there's no damage to Mr. Zimmerman. How could he have possibly been in such an altercation with no damage? And then the next thing you know, a couple of weeks later, why, there you go, here's on the magazine or something with visual evidence of damage to Mr. Zimmerman. So again, that just would prove my point that all these suppositions don't mean anything because you don't know what you're talking about until you get the fact. Gotcha. And then how about on the other side in terms of people that were in favor? Oh, yeah. Favor there's all the noise about, you know, well, who's doing the screaming and whatnot, you know, uh, what right did the person have to be there? He lives in Miami. Well, his dad. But, so, yeah, sure, it just depends on who, who, who conversation was at play at, at the Yes, time. sir. You, you mentioned a, a recording of, of something, correct? Did you listen to that recording? Yeah, I've been exposed to renditions, alleged renditions of the recording. When you say renditions, and I know you're in the entertainment business, um, did you um, listen to it on TV and you record it and then try to listen to it more? No, never you recorded know, it. Enhance it in any way? Well. No, no. Okay. I've heard what they've proposed and I've always assumed we don't know if that's an actual recording. I got you. We don't know if, you know. And, and when you say you heard what they proposed, you're talking about the media, like on TV or in the news? Or, and or, other people in conversations about that. Okay. Did you yourself listen to the actual recording yourself? Any of the recordings, if there were more than one? 
I've heard, as a matter of fact, just, uh, I, I guess two weeks ago probably, you would hear it again. Yeah. Okay, did you come to any conclusions as a result of hearing that? No. Okay. Um, did you listen to any of the commentary on, in the media, both either in the local or national people commenting about the case? And I'm talking about not just, sometimes the news you kind of borders into people giving opinions, mm -hmm. but what I'm talking about is strict opinions, you know, either lawyers or other commentators talking about, well, this is what happened, or this is the law, or anything like that. Uh, nothing that jumps out. Most of what, what comes off as firm opinion generally comes from other people in the street. Okay. It seems to me from sure. my recollection right off the bat. Did you hear any commentary from any of the uh, local people here in terms of attorneys here? No. Were they involved in the case or anything like that? Do you no. recall any news not, conferences not about anything that? that I can re recollect? No. No interviews on radio with attorneys or anything else. No. Um, do you recall looking at any pictures regarding the case? Yes. Okay. What pictures come to mind? I've seen, for instance, um, Mr. Zimmerman at the police department. I've seen uh, alleged pictures of damage to Mr. Zimmerman's head. Okay. And um, you understand that whatever you were exposed to in the media may or may not come That's out in trial. Correct. Yes. And the question is, can you agree to if you were exposed to it, like you mentioned right now, can you agree if you're sitting as a juror and that comes up in your mind as you're listening to the evidence that that cannot factor into your decision? In other words, you have to disregard whatever exposure you had media. Can you do that? If I'm instructed? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, the court's been instructed that. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, now, anything regarding any other photographs that come to mind right now other than the one you mentioned, Mr. Zero? No. I can't pick of any other, possibly, I don't know, I don't remember if it's, it could be just a mental image I'm picturing of the courtyard, possibly. Okay. I may have seen, you know, a picture of the, the courtyard, some concrete and grass or something. Okay. Or maybe I'm just imagining in my own mind what I thought when I read it. Sure. I don't know. Um, do you remember watching any or listening to any um, anything about any witnesses making any kind of statements or anything? Anybody involved in the case? Yes. Uh, any come to mind right now? Yes. W which ones? Um, an alleged statement. And I say alleged because I didn't hear this person speak it with their own voice, but an alleged statement from someone who was purported to be Trayvon Martin's girlfriend Okay. in an associated phone call. Okay. Did you come to any conclusions as a result of that? Absolutely not. I didn't hear her say anything okay. you know, okay. that I can remember as something that somebody said she said. Right. He right. said she said stuff I try to like, okay, we'll put that back there. Okay, all right. Um, how about any other things come to mind in terms of uh, statements by anybody that possibly was involved in the case? Nothing that jumps to the fore now. Okay. Um, you mentioned discussions with people that you interact with, yeah. right? Um, how about with anybody else that uh, family or uh, I'm assuming the people you interact with is at work also and friends, is that correct? Right, but there really there's been minimal, if anything, in the way of like family discussions. Okay, okay, so no discussions with family about the case. Um, did you visit any kind of the um, websites, if there are any dedicated to, the, to one side or the other? No. And I gather when you uh, filled out the questionnaire, you stated you were asked, obviously, whether you had formed an opinion, and you stated you had not. When I say formed an opinion as to the guilt or innocence of the defendant, uh, mm. Mr. Zerman, is I that correct? I could reasonably. No, I hadn't. Okay. Uh, one of the other areas that this questionnaire covers is the, uh, the dedication of time that you would have to, if you were picked a juror, it's unknown right now how long, but it, it could be conceivably anywhere from four to six weeks, it may be less but it, the range is maybe that. Um, and I'm assuming you feel down that that would not be an uh, insurmountable hardship. I'm currently to underemployed. Pardon me? I'm currently underemployed. You're I've currently underemployed. Yes. Okay. 
So from that standpoint, it would not be a hardship. Right. Or, or any other commitments that you have, in other words. Right. Okay. Um, I may have a moment, Your Honor. Finally, sir, you talked about discussions um, with other people in terms of people expressing their opinions. Mm -hmm. And you, pay, you favored, I guess, being the devil advocate. Is that correct in terms of, was that always the case? Or did you no. take a position? No, on? I just, especially when it gets heated, yes, sir. I've, for instance, I'm a painter. And I might have been working at a, a given restaurant and conversations would erupt. And I'd hear people talking and going back and forth and back and forth, and then the heat would start to generate. And then I would try to grab the weaker side and shoot humor at the stronger side. So, so you don't mind becoming interjecting yourself in those discussions and, and try to, uh, I guess. Especially when I think they've gone way overboard with their opinion. Yeah, okay. right. Would you also at the same time have the ability to? Without interjecting yourself, listen to what is being said. Oh yeah, completely, and then and then at the very end come to a conclusion. In other words, the role of a juror, you know, when you're sitting as a juror, you can't say, "Hold on, I want to challenge that." You got to listen to all the evidence of course. and evaluate what is being said, yeah. and then apply your God-given common sense, but also the law of the judge will give you to the evidence that's being presented. Would you be able to do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I wouldn't want to form an opinion unless I had all the potential relevant information possible. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. West. for George Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. I take it you recognize him. Mm -hmm. him on TV. Uh, in fact, um, what was your first reaction? You know, talking about the publicity and the, the media attention this case got. Um, what was your first reaction or impression when you heard this story unfold? That would be rather difficult because it's been so long. What would I have felt in the very first instance when the information first was presented to the public? Well, let me ask you this. Are you generally familiar from the media yes. with the timeline of the case? Generally. Do you, well, from, as a reference point, um, February 26, 2012 mm -hmm. was the night of the gotcha. shooting. Okay. And then I, th I thought you said within a couple of days it kind of got, got your attention. Yeah, well, initially it was like, it, it didn't, it, I think it took a couple of days for it to hit the news in the first place, didn't it? Uh-huh. Do you know why it hit the news, why it became such a big story? Uh, yeah, I think I do. I think... Somebody had started making a lot of noise because Mr. Zimmerman hadn't been arrested. Did you learn that through the media? Yeah. And based upon that, is that what you think sort of got this thing going? Into the hubbub that it is? Right. Probably. Okay. So Maybe what the hype. Not the, the lack of an arrest, but the hype. So what was your reaction when you started hearing these stories unfold about um, February 26th on, that he hadn't been arrested, for example? Did um, you have a reaction to that? Well, I, I suppose, yeah, I would have thought, you know, if arrest was due, there would have been an arrest made. 
and knowing from the media that there wasn't, what did you think about that? Well, I guess that's when I started to get interested a little bit. So it took, like I say, a few days in the first place to even really draw an interest because at first there was really not much said. There was, next thing you know, there's a lot, whole lot of talk and well, what's this about? And then when you start to read up, and then the next thing you know, it's headlines. Well, you know, we're not talking about the evidence of the case today. Correct. We're just talking about information mm -hmm. prospective jurors may have before, as they come in the door here. Oh, yes. So, we're just looking for, you know, honest opinions yes. and sort of feelings, impressions, opinions, that sort of thing about the case. So, what was your reaction, your opinion, um, when you realized that there had been a delay in an arrest? Did you think well, that again, like I said, I thought initially um, would have been if there hasn't been an arrest, there's probably a reason why. Mm -hmm. Did you try to figure out what that reason was? Well, not until a lot more noise was made about it. Now I'm thinking we're, we're talking, we're into, what, maybe a month, month and a half before, it, when it really started getting loud, then yeah, it would draw my attention because I do have a tendency to try to keep up with the news a little bit, and when something really overwhelms the airwaves, I guess you can't miss it, can you? No, so did, then you've got opinions on both sides about why there's not an arrest. Well, what were the opinions that, uh, that were expressed to you about that? Nothing directly to me. It would be, like I say, I would watch, I, I try to, do my best to try to keep an even balance of, mm -hmm. I, I don't believe in one network bringing you fair and balance. I think to get a balance, you want to start from the outside and kind of work your way toward the center. So you've got one network, seemingly, that wants to carry a, well, uh, there wasn't an arrest for this reason. And then another network that says, well, there wasn't an arrest for this reason. See what I'm saying? And what did you make of that? Did you ever form an opinion yourself whether or not there should have been an arrest? Based upon what you've been hearing. Over me? time? No, over the first month. Well, my curiosity would get peaked. I, I guess I would uh, assume if somebody shoots somebody, shouldn't there be a, uh, well, maybe not. No, I mean, if somebody's perfectly within their rights, to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. The question um, that I was trying to focus on, and I understand it sounds like you were conflicted. Uh, that well, you weren't, you didn't know. Because I'm not, you know, one to take what <coughs> any given channel tells me as gospel. They don't know the facts. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what was your thinking at that point? Did you form an opinion yourself whether or not Mr. Zimmerman should have been arrested. Over time? Within the first, well, no. Within the first month or so? How, I would say no. That you did not form an opinion? No, not within the first you month. You heard other people expressing opinions? Yeah, oh, yeah. But you were not taking a position yourself? No, because I knew I didn't have enough information. Is that the way you are? You're kind of cautious? Is that what you're saying? That you don't weigh in on something until you're satisfied you have all the information? Unless somebody, if you were if, in a way of a personal conversation with other people? Or my clear own personal understanding? We're really talking about what you thought about this case, what you think your ability would be to consider evidence or information you may have heard outside the courtroom and separate that from evidence you might hear inside. So I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on whether you ever formed an opinion yourself. Ever? One quite finished with the question. I'm sorry. Uh, whether you ever formed an opinion or, exp or even expressed an opinion about uh, George Zimmerman's guilt or whether or not he should have been arrested. N I'd never formed or expressed an opinion that I can remember, I can't see myself having done that, mm -hmm. about his guilt, no. About whether he should have been arrested, eventually, yes, I, I came to a conclusion whether I thought he should have been arrested, but that was, again, based on what I knew to be a of a lack of information. 
When do you think, well, what was your opinion that you finally reached whether or not he should have been arrested? Eventually, I concluded for myself, although, well, with the limited information that I had, that he had probably should have been arrested and that this should be where it is now. When do you think you reached that opinion? That probably took a couple months. <coughs> Because, I mean, I, I didn't glue myself to what was going on with that. You know, there was other things in my life, too, you know. So over time, you keep hearing about it and hearing about it. And actually concern yourself with it to find, okay, now I'm curious. Let's find out this. Oh, well, here comes another one's opinion. All right, let's put that aside then. What, what did you learn in the media that made you think that he should be arrested? That he should have been arrested? Right. Now, let me, let me just be more clear. Um, I take it that you know he wasn't arrested immediately. Correct. And that he was arrested sometime later. Yes. And at some point later you decided, based upon the information you had, that that was the right decision? That he should have been arrested? By half of that is by very virtue that he was arrested. I'm, that, that tells me, well, well then why wasn't he arrested in the first place? Well, let me ask you that. Do you have any idea why he wasn't arrested in the first place, based upon what you've um, heard in the media? Uh, idea? No. Anything along those lines would be sheer speculation. Would anything direct me toward that? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Well, for example, were you questioning the, um, the motives of the Sanford Police Department? I suppose I may have heard that being done. Mm -hmm. Was that an issue for you, that you questioned the motives of the Sanford Police Department? Not until after he was arrested. Then I had to think, well, why wasn't he arrested in the first place? That's what I'm saying. It, it didn't really get all of that interesting for a long time. And a lot of different events had to unfold, and now that just leaves me in a, a whole different, you know, where this is concerned now that I've given it thought over the last few days when I, I realized that I could be a prospective juror and had to honestly in my own head and heart consider the thing very seriously. You know, I had to think, well, how do I come to this conclusion I don't know the facts. So I'm just going to put it all off the table. If I'm going to wind up being a juror, then I'll find out the facts and I'll be able to run a reasonable process through my head that'll bring me to reasonable conclusions. That because of the importance of the, that consideration, I ought to just not even bother with at this point. If I'm to know the facts, then you're going to present me the facts. If I'm not, I won't be sitting here. And then I can go back to any speculation I like. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Were you aware from the media of the community's reaction? Oh, yeah. That's a, what yeah. did you know about that? Well, uh, it got just as divided here as MSNBC is from Fox News in our community. I could be right down the street here in Lake Mary painting the inside of a building and half the day the conversation would come, now this is months back, the conversations would come up that people would flare at each other in, the, in this town. You know? Were you tuned in to any rallies, demonstrations, protests? No. no. You, you weren't paying attention to nope. the news? Never went to any of those, never, no looked for them on the internet sites or anything like that. Never, yeah. never attended any of those events. Nope. Uh, never Absolutely. signed a petition? Absolutely not. Or a donated money? Nope. Did you ever do anything to um, support that cause, if you will? And I don't mean to describe it in a way that, that, that you don't understand, but you know what, I'm, if I say the cause, the, the idea that George Zimmerman wasn't arrested and people were... Oh, no. No. You, no. Nope. That you didn't actively support 
that cause in any way. His arrest? Correct. No. Uh, because I wouldn't have known. I mean, why would I if I didn't understand the facts? You know, maybe he didn't deserve to be here. In fact, again, like I said, I was surprised, and that was the only thing that made me question the Sanford Police Department, was that he finally did get arrested. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even questioned the Sanford Police Department. All that does is tell me, okay, well, what went wrong initially then? Well, that he got arrested finally. Mm -hmm. um, did that mean to you that he must Objection. probably... Mr. Wes interjecting, just, I would ask that he just ask me what, he, what it meant as opposed to Mr. Wes interjecting what he please. Okay, can you rephrase your question, please? <laughs> that when George Zimmerman got arrested, did that mean anything to you about the, uh, um, whether or not he should have been arrested earlier? I, I know that sounds convoluted, you know what I'm getting No, at? I think I've already made that clear, though. I, 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 when he finally did get arrested, all, all that brought to mind was, well then, what took so long? Why wasn't he arrested in the first place? You would think somebody shoots somebody and a judge is going to want to hear why. So to me, that's a snapper. Did you consider then that the Sanford Police Department wasn't doing their job? <coughs> if they didn't arrest him that night or not soon until he, Not until he did eventually get arrested. Then I considered that as a possibility and I thought, well, wait a minute now, I'm not wearing that badge either. I'm not in that room either. And I don't know why he didn't, you know, they prob obviously know more than I do about, they felt they had good reason not to arrest. So that's really my, my thought. You knew that the arrest hadn't taken place, and were you, were you in any way critical um, of the Sanford Police Department for not making the arrest, in, in your mind? No, only for a glimpse when he first got arrested. That, that mm -hmm. struck me off. And, um, well, why didn't this happen in the first place? Do, do you I, know when he was arrested, the date, or? No, I know it did take a while. I think it was like, what, a month, maybe a month and a half or something mm -hmm. after the incident? That's my best ballpark estimation of a recollection. So it wasn't until after Mr. Zimmerman got arrested that it made you, I guess I'm missing that point. So some time happens. We go from February 26th okay. to the date when he's arrested. Mm -hmm. And we know that was some matter of weeks. Right. right? So when you learned he was arrested, what was your thinking about what had happened before? What aspect of what happened before? Well, are you saying that that proves that he should have been arrested no, earlier? No, that, that, that was my initial sense. But then I thought, no, wait a second. Now you're not wearing a badge. You're not in that police department. You don't know why he wasn't arrested. Maybe they had reason. And okay. So you were still... It's not my, it wasn't my judgment to make. Yeah. Were you I still open-minded on oh, the course. issue? Of course. Were you still open-minded on the issue of whether George Zimmerman was guilty? Of course. You'd have to be, wouldn't you? You know, um, that's why we're here, not making accusations about individuals, but the right. whole idea that there's been this flood of information. Right. And, and has it affected you in any way at all? Has it affected me? Right. Do you think this flood of information has affected you in any way in your ability to be fair and impartial? No. No. Has it ever caused you to form an opinion about the guilt or innocence of George Zimmerman? It has caused me to give weight to that potential until I have to look back and realize that I don't have near the facts necessary to make such a, a judgment, you know, to form such an opinion. I need more facts. That's what I would always come to the conclusion. Have you ever considered whether um, the evidence supports self-defense? or is against self-defense from what you know? I don't in, know in what the, the evidence is. Uh, is I, that what we're I, here to That determine? was my, my bad, my bad uh, choice of words. The information that you've received generally out there. Yeah, I could form any it. impression or opinion as to whether 
Um, it was not really because it's not evidence. Wasn't self defense or no, you don't have any any view at all on that. I, I can't form an opinion because everything that I've heard could be flushed through facts. I don't have evidence. I have this person's opinion and that person's opinion and the other person's opinion. This network's opinion and that network's opinion, but I don't know a thing mm -hmm. until it's established. After the sort of initial flurry of activity, um, you sort of had less interest in the case? I started to get less interest as it got hotter. <laughs> yeah. In the summer? As people... The weather? No. Oh. The atmosphere. The political atmosphere. It got very politically charged. That had cooled down over time, you know, but uh, yeah, within right around the time that Mr. Zimmerman got arrested, and for, I would guess, probably a month afterwards, around here, uh, um, among people who keep up with the news, uh -huh. it got very politically charged. And that's when I tried to, because everything that I do depends on being able to discuss things with people, you know, have a reasonable relationship with people, where they start forming opinions on both sides and try to drag you to their opinion on anything. It's not just about this case, it's about anything that's political. It could be George Bush, it could be Barack Obama. You know, any of that can get you in trouble in the lines of, you know, that I'm in. in the do, you, do you distance yourself from that ongoing political debate? I try a lot of times, unless it's lighthearted and people are, you know, able to reasonably handle the discussion. Then I like politics. Um, the discussions that you've had in person, and I mean that in a general sense. Would you have had some face-to-face -face conversations with people maybe while you <coughs> were at work? Mm -hmm. um, how, how about uh, through social media? I think you mentioned Facebook. Right, yeah. Do you communicate with a group of friends over Facebook? <coughs> and um, some of the discussions that we've talked about here today, um, where you've uh, are they on Facebook? Well, uh, there's been some talk of this case among people that I know on Facebook, mm -hmm. but that would have been, again, back closer to the time that he was arrested when a lot of the, there was a, a lot more electricity in the air about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of it had cooled down over time. Are you aware of any websites that have been dedicated for the support of... Uh, no, I just heard him. No, I didn't, wasn't even aware there were such sites. I was going to ask you that. Well, I'll be more specific. Are you aware of any websites that are dedicated for the support of George Zimmerman? No. Are you aware of any websites that were dedicated in support of the prosecution? No. Or on behalf of the Martin family? No, I hadn't even heard of the concept until I believe he mentioned it. Um, so certainly you've never been on one no. of those websites or no. posted a comment or par participated in a discussion? I'm not. Do you, uh, when you go on, have you gone on to websites and posted comments and actually engaged in the conversation string? No, just where Facebook and all the people that I would know sometimes and again, this isn't recent now, this is back then, right. people would express their opinion and I might interject, you know, humor or I might interject, how do you know? Mm -hmm. What do you know? But you've never been on any websites that's dedicated no. in support of no. Trayvon Martin? Or no. Uh, do you use your um, real name when you go online? Yes. So, if I understand sort of in sum, uh, you have a lot of information about the case, but you haven't formed any opinions um, one way or the other on Mr. Zimmerman's guilt or innocence? If you can call the speculation from both sides information. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what's out there. 
What's out Whatever there? it is that's out there. Yes, I've absorbed a lot, especially back then. There was a lot to absorb. And uh, after absorbing all of that, you haven't formed any opinions yourself no. about George Zimmerman's guilt or innocence? No, because I don't think I have the information to qualify any opinion. Any, you know. And uh, likewise, you haven't formed any opinions about the, uh, the appropriateness of the conduct of the Sanford Police Department in whether okay. or not to Same arrest way. Mr. Zimmerman? Correct. May I have just, just a moment? Uh, what, on the hardship issue, uh, I know that you've indicated you're both a musician and a painter. Mm -hmm. Do you have a regular musician job? No. Do you have a regular painting job? No, I'm an independent painter. And things are slow. So when you say underemployed, you don't have any, any work at the time? Right I now? don't have anything booked at the moment. Something could jump off tomorrow. Are, are you aware from, from this information that jurors might be sequestered four to six weeks? I'll be fine. How? Because I live at a uh, circumstance where rent is not an absolute necessity. I'm not the only one that lives there, and I'm already behind, and, uh, and the house is fine. You share a residence with a number of others? Well, yes, I have another person, yes. Have you talked with this person about the case? No. Or the idea that you may be on jury duty? They knew that I'd come in for jury duty. But, but if not you what case? If you were sequestered, do you have other sources of income that would allow you to spend four to six weeks away? Um, well, yeah. See, when I was doing much better, I had the good sense to, for instance, collect guitars. I had a very large, and reasonably uh, valuable guitar collection that under these hardship circumstances, now I'm able to, I've got four of them for sale on Craigslist right now, as a matter of fact. I just sold one last week, I sold another one the week before. At one point I had 125 guitars alone. Yeah. I got 15,000 watts of PA equipment, I got three full sets of drums, five kilos, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm okay underemployed currently. I'm all, I'll be all right. Speaking of PA equipment and such, you reminded me of a question I didn't ask you about. Um, the recordings in the, uh, in the case, um, can you characterize them for me briefly so I know we're talking about the same ones? Which recordings? Recordings connected with this case. You mean about the alleged screams? Yes. What would you like to, as far as characterizations, well, you just did, so that's the one I'm talking about. Uh, first of all, why do you call them alleged? Well, because there's allegations that they came from both people. There's allegations, one side says, oh, they came from this guy. Another side says, well, no, they came from, you know, Mr. Zimmerman. What's your information on that? What, what draws you to that conclusion? I haven't formed a conclusion. Now, the, how do you know that um, some people are saying it's Mr. Zimmerman, some people are saying it's Mr. I've heard Mr. that on the news. If you're on, if you turn on Fox News or you turn on uh, MSNBC News, from the time, from before he got arrested, they would have, that was a, seemed to be one of those stronger discussions. Have you been aware of anything recent in the news on that subject within the last couple of weeks? Nothing that's any different from the same place we were back then. Without evidence, we don't know who that is. Have you, um, are you aware from listening to the news or reading the news, being exposed to the media, about anything in this case that's going on now related to that evidence? I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. Are you aware of anything going on in the case right now? Any hearings in the case? Any? No. No. Are there hearings afoot now about, I did hear something, what, last week, two weeks ago, um, before I knew what jury I might be picked for, uh -huh. that there was specialist allegedly that says 
on, and if I'm not mistaken, there are, aren't there specialists for both sides that claim, oh, it's him, no, it's him, and now we're into an argument up between <laughs> specialists? Or, all right, that's the impression I got. So you're aware there's an issue ongoing in the case about that? About the voice. Are you, yeah. uh, are you aware of whether that issue is resolved? To the last I knew, no. There was absolutely no resolution. Uh, the same as everything else about this case. It's been competing sides. Yeah. Yeah. Just one minute, James. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So remain seated. Council, when you're ready, please approach.
Hey, I'm Juror E7. Um, I have a question for you. Um, you had indicated that you did some postings on Facebook, and did you post something on March 21st, 2012, under the Coffee Party Progressives? If we showed this That's to you. That's possible because I know they're on my list. Okay, I'm going to circle All right. one and ask you to look at that and ask you if that is. Is the date there. on there as well? Because I don't remember what you just said. <laughs> And I, I don't need an explanation for what's posted. I just want to know if that is, in fact, your posting. Yes. Okay, yes, thank that you. is. Okay, thank you very much. Council want to approach? E13. 